Hello everyone, welcome to the Red Stake. Um, let's get started. So today's the big day with it being um, draft day. It's one of my favorite times of the year. Um, this draft is not as you know as good as previous drafts. You know, according to a lot of people, but you know whether Jeff you know, has a lot of star quarterbacks, or they or you know they just have a lot of you know star players in general. They they just have a bunch of good role players. That's at least these teams are getting um, some help that they need. Um, it's just fun to see, you know, the emotions of drive night with the players and all that and see where they're going to go finally. Um, so let's get started. Um, so with my first overall pick, I um, I feel like it should be defenseman A. Henderson from Michigan, but the rumor has it that's going to be defenseman Jerry Walker from Georgia because um, they like his up upside higher, although I feel like A. Henderson is a nice solid player. But Jacksonville, because the, the owner wants A. Henderson, but the GM coach really want Walker, so... Sounds like they're going to go walk in there, so that's what they're going to do. Um, Detroit, they're going to gladly take, you know, Michigan and Aiden Hutchison. Um, and that's a no-brainer for them, so they get a good one there. Um, and then Houston at three. There's there's two different routes that they can go. Technically, they can go defensive, but the more likely route, they're either going to go offensive tackle to help out, you know, protect the line of David Mills there, or they're going to go corner um, since they lost some corners for agency. Um it won't, so either option they go won't surprise me, but I feel like if they should go with the offensive talk here, and I feel like they're going to go Ikeem Aquanu from NC State here. It just makes the most sense that you got to protect David Mills. If you want to see if he's your future guy, like they say they want to, then you got to protect him. Um, fourth, the New York Jets. Um, this is if this is if you know those top three players are off, because if any of those top three players fall to four, I feel like they'll snatch one of them. But if assuming all, all of those three go first, I feel like they're going to go. Um, quarterback Sauce a Gardner here from Cincinnati. They just need a lot down corner. They, you know, got and especially in the division we have Tyree Kill the guard, and you have Jalen Waddle the guard. You have Stephon Diggs the guard. It's like you need an elite corner, and Amon Gardner should be that corner. Um, the Giants they obviously got to go offensive tackle here to help out that O line stack. I feel like they're going to go offensive tackle Evan Neal from Alabama. Um, six Carolina. Um, they already told Sim Darnold they're most likely going to take quarterback, but I doubt it'd be in the second or third round. So therefore, I feel like they're going to go um, with uh, Malik Willis here because I feel like he has the highest upside of all the quarterbacks in the draft. Um, seven, you got New Giants again. Then they can go a couple different routes here. It's kind of this one's very hard for me to predict here because they have so many options and so many needs that they can address here. I feel like in the end they're going to go with you know one of the best players available, and I thought they're going to. They're going to go Kayvon Thibodeau, a defenseman from Oregon here. Um, it just it just makes sense, you know, to get a good pass rusher, you know, just, um, because the, the Giants, frankly, don't have that right now. Um, eight, Atlanta 8, they're going to go wide receiver here. The Cavs really suspended. Um, Julio Jones obviously left a year ago. And besides, you know, Pitts and Patterson, it's like you need that third guy because there's like Zacharias or – um, Gage, is, who's a free agent actually, so he's already, or is, oh no, he went to Tampa actually, so he's already gone and all that, so it's just like, you need that third guy, and I feel like they're going to, now originally I had Jameson Williams going, so I feel like he could be great, they were just speed and all that, but I feel like they're just going to go with the best wide receiver available, which in my opinion is Garrett Wilson from Ohio State, so that's the direction I feel like they're going to go. Um, nine, you got Seattle, I feel like they can go, again, multiple different directions here, they they would have, it would be wise um, for them to go offensive tackle here because um, the O-line's bad and Drew Locke's, you know, going to need a good O-line since he's not Russell Wilson. But um, I do feel like in the end they're going to go defense here, you know, because Pico's defense guy. And the question is what position because they can address multiple different positions. They can go linebacker um, to replace um, Bobby Wagner. Uh, but the problem is if they dropped in a linebacker this high – is is a little bit risky because I feel like the line their sweet spots are kind of like in the mid first round. So unless they trade back, um, I feel like they're going to take cornerback Derek Stingley Jr. from LSU CSI upside. Which by the way, with all these things, I'm not. Predi this is assuming there are no trades because for me it's hard to predict trades, so I don't include that in my mock drafts. So this is just assuming there's no trades whatsoever. Um, and then the tenth tenth pick of the New York Jets, they're going to go wide receiver because I need need give Zach Wilson the weapon here. Um, now, if Gary Wilson falls to them, they will pick him most likely. But if he get, goes beforehand, then it's basically, I mean, a lot of it is technically an option, but it's basically between Williams and Drake London from USC at this point. Um, I would say um, while Williamson may have a 
Williams may have that higher upside here. If you're the Jets, you don't want someone coming off injury. Now, both of them are coming off injuries, but Williams more of a recent injury, and it's an ACL injury. So with, and with the speed and all, you don't want that to be hindered anyway because you need someone to come in right now. And so I feel like that will go to Drake London. And, and also with the fact that since Zach Wilson loves to throw the, the tight w- throw, uh, window throws and all that, Drake London's a great, you know, catcher when the balls can be contested and all that. That's why he's getting kind of really like Mike Evans, you know, or Michael Thomas. Like, that's what he does. I feel like that's a type of weapon that Zach Wilson can need to use there. 11, Washington. Now, they said they, they're, they, I heard that they're either going to go wide receiver here, which I don't get why. I mean, you got, you got, you got multiple arms. You got Terry McLaurin. You got, um, uh, Mims, you got Brown and Mill, who they drafted last year. You got Humphrey. So you got five different weapons there. Now, of course, you don't, besides Malav, not a lot of them are great per se, but it's like you definitely have enough weapons there. And I don't feel like that's their main issue. Um, now their other option is they're going to, if Kyle safety from Notre Dame, Kyle Hampton falls in them, they might pick him. And I, and since I haven't fallen to Washington, I feel like that's where he's going to be selected, uh, which would be a great pick for Washington. Um, 12, Minnesota. Now, Minnesota is super hard for me to predict. Like, I mean, they could go corner because corners, their corner room is not deep at all. Um, they could go defensive end, bolster up that defense line, which is already pretty decent. Or they can go linebacker here to make that more deep. I mean, there's not really a lot of needs for Minnesota per se. It's just more for depthness at this point. I feel like they're going to go with um, a person who's been rising up the draft boards recently over the past weeks, and I feel like they're going to go defensive end, Jermaine Johnson, Florida State. Um, I feel like Minnesota, you, know, you have Aaron Rodgers' division. If Justin Fields ends up being good, you have him to deal with. So you want a good pass rusher um, to deal with to deal with um, those quarterbacks. Um, 13, Houston. Now, because they take offensive tackle – with a third pick, I feel like they're going to go quarterback here. Now, if they do go quarterback with their third pick, then I feel like they'll go offense tackle. It's just kind of vice versa. So I have them taking, you know, since both Stingley and Garner are both gone at this point, I have them taking um, Trent McDuffie, the cornerback from Washington University, because um, I feel like he's the third best corner in the draft. Uh, 14, Baltimore. Again, Baltimore could go many different rounds. They're cornerbacks week, but at this point, especially McDuffie goes just goes right before them, and you're taking the fourth best corner in the mid first round where the fourth best corner honestly should be at the end of the first round. So it's like, it's very reaching there. So again, unless they trade back, it's just like, I feel like they won't go that route. Um, now they could bolster up the deer feet, the defensive line. I can see that happening, taking the defensive end there, but I feel like in the end, they're going to go offensive tackle here in Charles cross. Cause I do feel like their offensive line was suspect last year. And that maybe that's part of the reason why Lamar Jackson got injured and was out the rest of the year. So I feel like they should bolster that up in, since Charles Cross is kind of rated like a top 10 prospect, if he falls down at 14, I feel like Baltimore would be wise to just take the, one of the best players available at this point and then take, and take Cross. 15, Philadelphia. I have them taking a wide receiver, especially since they're going to move off Raker and all that. He's a bust to pair up with. The, I thought they're going to take um, Devontae Smith's teammate and wide receiver James Williams from Alabama. So they get a nice speedster there um, and get a weapon for, another weapon for Jalen Hurts. Um, 16 New Orleans. I had them taking off as a tackle and Trevor Penny. I fit. Now, there's rumors that they, oh, they can take a quarterback use or both. Are, I, I just don't see them taking a quarterback this draft. Now, there's a bunch of good quarterbacks this draft. That's one thing. But since there's not, just write out James Winston for a year or two and address some needs, like, for example, off as a tackle here. So that's why I have them taking Penny there. Now, if, if they go to a different route, then for the LA Chargers, who's next, they would take Trevor Penny. But if Trevor Penny is taken, at this point, you're kind of reaching for offensive tackle at this point. So I feel like they're going to take defensive tackle Jordan Davis from Georgia at this point um, so they can bolster that defensive interior there since their run defense was horrible last year. Um, 18, New Orleans. I had them taking wide receiver Chris Olave from Ohio State because they, they need another weapon for Michael Thomas. Because if you have Michael Thomas, Chris Olave, and then Callaway who emerged last year, that, those three receivers along with, you know, uh, Deontay Harris and um, – and other weapons there, like a, and a Traquan Smith, like that, that's a pretty good group there. It's not looking as bleak as it did throughout times last year. Um, 19, Philadelphia. I've been going defense here this time. Um, now the question is you can go many different routes here. Um, I have them taking um, the best linebacker available this point. I have them taking Devin Lloyd from Utah. I feel like he kind of fits in their culture perfectly. 20, Pittsburgh. Now, Pittsburgh can go many different routes here, but I have them taking the quarterback. Um, to kind of like be their successor to Mitch Trubisky because uh, Mitch Trubisky may work for a year or two but you're going to need someone else I have them taking Hungo product, uh, 
Um, Kenny Pickett who played at Pittsburgh. Now, I don't think they like Pittsburgh that much. I mean, I know they much prefer Malik Wills. Maybe they might go Desmond Ritter or Matt Corral because of the higher upside there. I wouldn't shock me if that happens. Um, but I'm just going to go with Kenny Pickett here. Um, 21 New England. I have them taking a wide receiver here. They can go many different routes here because they can go a quarterback, you know, to replace J.C. Jackson who left for, for the Chargers. But again, they're reaching at this point. So that's why I have them going wide receiver here. Um, I have them now, of course, I originally had them taking a wide receiver. It's like, yeah, that's reaching. But, again, since Bill Belichick's kind of letting the scouts do their stuff and he's not taking over the draft, and I feel like they'll select a good wide receiver this time. Cause, and I have them taking Traylon Burks from Arkansas. Yes, he's the best wide receiver at this point. Um, Green Bay 22, they obviously need a wide receiver as well. Um, they might trade up and it wouldn't surprise me, but if they stay put, then I feel like they're going to take a wide receiver as well. And I feel like the wide receiver they're going to take here is George Perkins I'm from Georgia. Now, it wouldn't surprise me if it's Jahan Dotson from Penn State. It's kind of between those two. But I have them taking Pickens here because a lot of people, he's been a lot of hype recently. He has a higher upside. Um, 23, Arizona. I feel like they're going to be gladly taking defensive here. George Kalarthas from Purdue. He, I mean, a lot of people think he's like top 10 worthy, but if he falls down there, Purdue, I mean, Arizona needs all the, you know, defensive linemen they can get because, I mean, J.J. Watt's old and injured too often. They lost. Um, Chandler Jones, they definitely needed a defensive end here. Now, if Jordan Davis falls to them, I that would be the other option. But if he doesn't, then Croft is a good option there. Dallas, uh, 24. I have them taking them center into your offensive lineman. Tyler Lindebaum from Iowa. A lot of people feel like he's one of the best offensive linemen in the draft. If I have him surprisingly falling down to Dallas there, and Dallas would be – if Dallas doesn't go receiver, like if Burks or Alave, if none of them fall down to them, then I feel like Dallas would be gladly to take – Glad to take Linderbaum there. I'm 25 Buffalo. They can go many different rounds here. Um, again, it's more for depth at this point. So they only need a lot right now. I have them going offensive tackle here with Zion Johnson from Boston College. Um, again, because if you can have a good offensive line for Josh Allen, like that's pretty good. Um, 26 Tennessee. Now they should go offensive line here, but again, they're kind of reaching this point. And I feel like um, they do have a linebacker um, depth that they can consider either linebacker or quarterback depth they can go with there. Again, quarterback might be a little bit too high, so I've been going with linebacker to Kobe Dean from Georgia because I feel like, again, he has high upside there. 27, I have – there's two options for 10, but either go corner or you either go offensive guard since, you know, Kappa – or Kappa, um, Kappa left for – yeah, Kappa left for Cincinnati and then the other guy, Reyes, whatever, retired. Um, so I feel like they're going to go hard and rare from Central Michigan University here. Um, 20, Green Bay. I've been taking, again, another center interior offensive lineman here in, in Kenyon Green since they had to let one of them go because they couldn't afford them. So I've been taking Kenyon Green again for me. And 29, Kansas City. I've been taking wide receiver Sky Moore from Western Michigan University. Now, again, John Donson might be better, but I, Sky Moore is more relatable to Tyreek Hill as far as SB goes. I feel like they're going to, that's a good, you know, replacement for him or the best they could do. Um, 30, Kansas City. Again, I've been taking, they desperately need a corner. So, um, they need help in that regard, so they have them taking cornerback Kalir Elam from Florida. Um, a lot of people project him to be first round. If not him, the injury with Clemson Jr. from I mean Jr. from Clemson might be another option, but I have them taking Elam from Florida. Um, 31st Cincinnati, um, I have them taking outside linebacker slash edge rusher um, David Ajobu from Michigan. Now, he was supposed to be higher, like I had Baltimore taking, you know, because of the hardball connection there since, um, again, Ajobu played in Michigan. Uh, but I just feel like um, because of that Achilles injury they suffered as pro day, I feel like that's probably going to fall down. But, again, some people are very optimistic he can still be a first-rounder. And if you're Cincinnati, no, of course, obviously, it's not great he's coming off Achilles injury. But if he can recover and be normal, then this is a, you know, this is a good, this is a good answer here because they need linebacker help. And this, will, and this can help the problems there. Um, and then 32nd with Detroit, I have them taking a cornerback. Uh, not to replace golf right now, but to kind of develop uh, for a year or two and then kind of take over. Now they can go either Desmond Ritter from Cincinnati, Matt Corral from Ole Miss. I feel like Cincinnati quarterback did, kind of fits more of their culture, fits more of Dan Campbell's like MO, if you will. So I feel like that's the route they're going to go there. So again, there are obviously by the time you, you read this, like there could be updated uh, stuff to where this would change. Or obviously, if you watch the draft, then you'll just have to see how right I or wrong I am. Um, and then. After the after the whole weekend drafts over, we'll come over with like how each team did in the draft and the grades and all that. But thank you very much for listening to my podcast today. Please subscribe to my channel, talking about me, and hopefully, I'll enjoy the draft. And thank you very much.